Hey, howdy, hey, welcome back to All About That Disney Life. I am Danny B, the girl who is all about that Disney life. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting and special video. I am currently on spring break, and so I decided to drive up to visit my mom and my sister. They live a, about four hours away from where I'm living. So basically, I have decided I'm going to take you guys on a tour of where I have have grown up, the different houses I've lived in, the schools that I went to, and just memories I have from my childhood. So hopefully I can just reflect back on the places that I have been, where I have come from, and get some closure. I think this is what I need, is closure. So I had to call my sister for the address information, but this is the very first house that I lived in. I don't remember much about it. My sister does, and she's told me some stories, but and I don't remember the layout of this house, but it is this corner house here. I only remember the green parts on the roof. What I remember about living in that house and on this street, there used to be a convenience store right down the street where my sister and I used to go and get uh, candy. And literally, that's all I remember about that house. But that is the first house I ever lived in. So this house here, this is the kind of first house I lived in when I was growing up. Like it's the one that I first remember growing up in and the layout for this house. When I remember you walk through front door, there's living room on your left, dining room, and then you go up the stairs. There was mine and my sister's room because we shared a room and then there was my mom's room with a bathroom and then go back down the stairs you go through the dining room there was a downstairs bathroom there was um a guest bedroom where my cousin was staying because she was staying with us at the time and then my sister and i had a playroom beside that you go down a set of stairs there is the way to get to the backyard and then if you keep going down those stairs there was a laundry room and this house had a downstairs apartment, and that's where my grandparents stayed with us. And uh, there's not great memories with this house. My mom was going through a rough time with my biological father because he was not a nice man. And she decided to leave for our sake. And it was a tough decision, but it was the right decision for her. And... Um, we left to go live in a townhouse. He kept the house, but then he sold it. But I have mixed memories about this house and it's hard to be here on this street knowing the things that I know now. So that's the house right there. It's kind of hard to see it. But it's that one right there. Like I said, I have mixed emotions about this house, knowing the things that I know now, and it just makes sense why we moved when we moved, because I was just a kid and I didn't understand. But I lived in this house until we moved to a townhouse, and I believe I was around eight when we moved. But this is the first house that I remember growing up in as a kid. Used to ride my bike along the sidewalk. That was when it was safe to actually let your kids ride on the sidewalk. And it was mixed emotions. So behind me is another high school. I went to this high school for daycare, actually. I went to a daycare that used to be in this high school. I don't know if it's in there anymore. I went there for two years before I went off to school. And this place has changed a lot down here. When I used to live in that house that I just showed you, I used to have a little red wagon. I would pack some snacks from the kitchen and a blanket and some of my stuffed animals. I would bring them over here to this area. There used to be a park around here, but this area has been built over. From what you can see, that's some of the high school still, but around this area, like in this parking lot, it used to be a lot of trees and a park. I used to have picnics by myself with my stuffed animals when I was a kid. That was when it was safe for 
kids to walk across the street and go to the park by themselves. And that park is no longer here. I think they still have that daycare because I see some stuff like gated areas that resemble a daycare setting. So I think the daycare is still here or it's a different one, but that's what I remember. So right now I'm in the parking lot of um, the next place that we lived in after we left that house. Um, my mom being a very brave woman, she took my sister and I and we lived in a townhouse. And the reason that we got this townhouse, it's because um, these set of townhouses, they're owned by a church organization called the Knights of Columbus, which my grandpa was a part of. So my grandpa basically got us this townhouse to stay in and it was hard at times, my mom being a newly found single mother raising two kids. So we lived here for a couple of years, I wanna say, until um, we moved to our next house where I stayed in for a lot longer until I moved out with my husband in 2021. And I think this was just a place to start over. I mean, I remember making friends in this complex and playing in the playground. I just had to drive around. The playground is not around anymore. I guess they got rid of it. It was all wooden, like they had wooden monkey bars and wooden platforms, so I guess it was too dangerous. I don't know. I didn't know how hard it was until it, you grow up and you start asking the deep questions about the why and you kind of understand what she went through. Nobody should have to go through that. And I mean, it was hard on my mom. She had a little girl and then my sister was a teenager. So she had a teenager and me. I don't want to show the townhouse where we stayed in because if I parked right in front of it, it would make me look like a stalker, obviously. So this is a townhouse complex. One of these townhouses is in the one that we stayed in, but this is the back part because I didn't want to look like a stalker if I show the actual townhouse where I stayed in. One thing I forgot to mention, because I forgot to mention this when I was at the townhouse, um, forgot to give the layout of the townhouse from my memory. So the townhouse is pretty small. So you walk in the front door, there's the kitchen, then keep walking down, there's the downstairs bathroom, then you reach a set of stairs that go up the stairs, and then the upstairs that was my sister's room, the bathroom, my mom's room, and then my room, and then Go down the stairs, there was our living room, and then you go downstairs to the basement, and that's where we had our storage. So this is through a gated fence, but this is my elementary school. Went here from kindergarten to half grade five, and then half grade six all the way to grade eight. It's hard to see. That is my elementary school. There are good, good and bad memories about this school, but it's a pretty decent sized school. And this building right across the street from the school was the church that I went to because I mentioned I am Roman Catholic and this was the church that's right across from the school. And this church is very important to me because I have been baptized at this church. I had my first communion, I had my confirmation, and this is where I got married. So this church is very important to me. So with the school that I just showed you, it used to look a little bit different. It, the, um, the left side of the building has remained the same since I started kindergarten there. What happened was um, when I finished uh, third grade, they tore down the rest of the school, but they kept the left side up. The old school used to be a lot bigger there used to be um this big entranceway that went up a bunch of stairs and then it had um two floors everywhere and also had a basement and everybody said that basement was haunted and that's where the bathrooms were and also storage but i remember after i finished third grade they tore down the school during the summer and we all had to share a school with another school so we were in that school from september up until march break and then after march break the school was done and that's the school that i spent most of my time at my elementary school i remember inside it was i'm sorry i'm just trying to remember what the inside of the school looked like so so the left side of the school that still remained from the old school there was the kindergarten 
and then the library on the bottom floor and then upstairs those were grade eight, grade seven, grade six and grade five up there. Then you go back down the stairs, there's the bathrooms and then the hallway, a ramp, the gym, the front office, and then you go down another hallway, there was computer lab, three classrooms, and then there was another classroom that was used for French, and I believe it's remained that way, I'm not sure, but the church that you see behind me, as I mentioned before, that is the church that I grew up with, and that church is very important to me because it was part of my family church going. My grandpa was a big member of this community with that church and he used to be a caretaker for the church. Like you clean the church floors, help out with the office, keep the outside grounds looking nice. And I remember whenever the school bell rang, my sister and I would run over to the church to help my grandpa organize the pews, like all the books that were in the pews. And then as I got older, I would help out with um, the church bazaars by delivering pamphlets door to door, being part of the tables. And I was the raffle girl. I would run back and forth because there is part of the church. It's called um, St. Mary's House or Mary's House, I can't remember. That's where the women used to sell their baked goods. And I would run back and forth from the bazaar going on in the school gymnasium all the way to this house to read um, a raffle numbers that I had just heard. So I got to work out doing that. And I'm really grateful that I got to come back to this school when I moved to a different city. And it just meant a lot to finish my elementary education at this school. So after we moved out of the townhouse, um, when my mom and this new man became engaged and we were going to become a family, we all decided to move into one house together before their wedding. And this is the house where I grew up basically from, when did we move into this house? 2003? Yeah, we moved in in 2003. And then I moved out of the house in the beginning of 2021 when I went to live with my then fiance. Now he's my husband, but it was, it's pretty weird being back here. I mean, there's people living in this house now and I don't want to seem like a complete stalker, but I can at least kind of show without being a stalker. This is like a behind view of but that was my house that I grew up in. Uh, what I remember about the layout of this house is you walk through the front door. This is how it was set up. There was the living room to my left and then the dining room. And then from the front door, there's the long hallway. There's a downstairs bathroom. And then there was um, the big kitchen. And then from the kitchen on my right, there is um, what we had was a den and it had a working fireplace. So then if we go back to the front entrance, there's a set of stairs that go up the stairs. From upstairs, there were three bedrooms. There was my sister's room, my room, and then my parents' bedroom, and it was an ensuite master bedroom. And then there was an upstairs bathroom that my sister and I shared. And then um, from the kitchen, there was another set of stairs that went down the stairs to the basement, and there was the finished basement. It had a basement bathroom, and it had storage and then there was our laundry room and then there were two bedrooms we used one of those rooms for what my dad called the fishing room all of his fishing supplies got put into that room and then there was another bedroom that was my brother's room <laughs> it's just weird being back here as I said this was the last house that I lived in with my family before I moved out to live with my then fiance now he's my husband I my mom has then sold the place, as I have mentioned, because there's new people living in there now. The reason why my mom sold this house is because there were too many ghosts, as she said. So, oh boy, we're getting into the personal stuff here. So, um, years ago, my grandma was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and then she lived in a hospice. My grandpa moved in with us into this house, 
And then um, my grandpa had a bad fall down the stairs in our house and um, he didn't survive after that. And also this was the last house that my dad, the man who my mom married, he became my dad. He um, died from lung cancer about six years ago. And it's just, it was too hard for everybody, especially for my mom to live in a house that my dad is no longer there anymore. And I do respect my mom's wishes in regards to selling the house. I just, it's just bittersweet. I mean, you grew up in this house for oh, about 15 years and then it's just gone in a flash. So along with the house, I used to bike along this path when I was a kid. It led to a local park and this forest because this path goes on for a bit a lot of the local kids used to say that this forest used to be haunted a lot of kids um i think in my time they used to build forts i remember like so many like fort branches were like just built this bridge is very iconic and important to me because every may 2 4 weekend in this park we used to have um, a Victoria Day Carnival for May 24 weekend. Every year without fail, some dumb teenagers would set this bridge on fire. I don't know how many times this bridge has been fixed, replaced, I don't know, but this is iconic. Right down there is the park where I used to play at. When I was a kid, I would just ride my bike over, go swing on the swings. It's pretty much all I did around here so weird being back here as an adult so the house that i went to the school that i went to it's um in the area when i moved from the townhouse i had to leave my old school and i went to a different school and driving back to the school right now it's just flooded with memories but i have not realized how i've gone far gone I have been from this school because the school has been completely rebuilt since the last time I was here. Like this is the school. This was the school that I went to. It did not look like this when I went to it. It has been obviously redone. It looks nice. Like everything has changed. The, the top, the playground, it's, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much this place has changed since I've been here. I really cannot believe how much things have changed since I've been here. I can't believe how much that school has changed since I've been there. I mean, it's been over 20 years, I think, since I've been there. Like, it's ridiculous and just flashbacks coming back. The reason why I left that school, I was only there for a year. When we moved to the new city, Obviously you have to go to the elementary school that's in your area. This was the elementary school that was in my area. And the only reason I was there for one year, I got bullied every single day by the same girl. And I was completely miserable. I mean, everybody did everything they could. My parents did everything they could. The teachers did everything they could. The principal did everything that she could, but it wouldn't stop. My mom then decided to pull me out of that school to put me back into my other school that I was at earlier. And it was a longer drive, but I was at least happier because I had my friends back. That school. The only thing, the nice thing about that school was the staff. I had amazing teachers, an amazing principal, and that's where I found the choir. And that's where I found out I love to sing. So when I went back to my old school for the rest of my elementary experience, I was able to join the school choir at that school because I was too shy to do it before. So this is um, my high school that I went to for four years of my life. I hated high school. I think every teenager hates high school. I at least had, I think, the worst high school experience of my life. I was so awkward in this high school. Oh, my God, like. This is just weird being back here and it's been like 10 plus years since I graduated from high school. And I think the only saving grace was the drama department in this school. So as I said, the drama department was my saving grace 
with this school, I needed, I guess every teenager is trying to find like their place in a high school, like what works for me. And my drama teacher, I had her all throughout high school because I took drama all throughout high school. I love her. I really loved her. She was the absolute best teacher in this place. And I was part of the um, school musicals. Um, so in my sophomore year of high school, we did high school musical, the musical, no joke. I played a brainiac. And um, my junior year of high school, we did uh, the Wiz, the disco version of the Wizard of Oz. And then my senior year of high school, we um, did something a bit different because my drama teacher, she lost her father and she took a leave of absence for a bit. And then an announcement finally came on in the end of January of the new year before I graduated. And they said, um, anybody interested in doing something for the drama department, come down to the auditorium after school. So it's like, it's obviously too late to start a musical production because usually you start those in the fall. So what my drama teacher decided to do was do a tribute to Broadway. So we did a huge tribute to Broadway, but not just Broadway. We did a tribute to the arts. We had um, a small cast, about 20 of us in this show. We did um, big uh, ensemble productions with everybody. And then my drama teacher gave um, everybody a chance to either do a solo or a duet. And um, I had a solo. I did um, I Can Hear the Bells from Hairspray. It was bad. It was really bad. But the big ensemble productions we did... Um, a Wicked medley, we did a Broadway medley, we did a Les Mis medley, and we also had um, the band, our our school band, uh, perform some numbers. We had a couple of our dance classes uh, do some numbers, and then we had an art exhibit for our art students in our cafeteria. So it was a whole tribute those nights to um, the arts in general. And like I said, I think every teenager hates their high school experience. I know I did, but if you had a great high school experience in yours, good on you. But <laughs> I cannot believe looking at this building now it's changed um, they rebuilt uh, a lot of things they rebuilt um, front of the school and they repainted uh, the portables I hate it oh my gosh I hate portables I hate having classes in portables because during the winter that's the worst when you have portable classes during the winter time because it's freezing so this parking lot is actually my college parking lot where I went to college. I've been sh driving around for a good five minutes trying to find a good spot, but I keep forgetting that some of the parking lots are for paying people, and I don't feel like uh, paying for parking right now, but I did find a good spot in the back where I can at least show back of the college that I went to. So I went to this college for three years, two years to get my regular degree to work in childcare, and then I took um, a, what I called it, a extra year just to do a one-year program before I decided to uh, go off to university to get my degree so that I could work in the school board. But this is where I found majority of my friends. I don't talk to them a lot anymore because we've all gone off and done our own thing. We still keep in touch from time to time, but last time that I saw um, two of my friends was my wedding in 2021. They were part of my bridal party. So um, I have some mixed memories about this place. Um, specifically, the bad memories is that I had braces all throughout college. I hated the braces, but my teeth turned out really great. But a lot of hard work. Nobody tells you how hard it is to actually do college or continue on with your education, whether you go to college, you go to university, or you do both. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication because this is the last stepping stone before you have a career for the rest of your life. You don't realize like what a safety net school was until you go out into the world and have a career and you dedicate to doing what you want to do. Doing this whole tour of where I've been throughout my childhood, I didn't realize what a safety net elementary school and high school was. It's like elementary school is like 
you learn things. High school is where you start to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. And then you take your course, whether it be go to college or go to university or you do both. And then this is the last education stepping stone before you have a career. I didn't realize what a safety net these places have been in my life. This is the back view, but uh, this is my college that I went to for three years. Like I said, a lot of good memories, bad memories, in between memories, just a lot of hard work. I practically lived at this college because I didn't have a car and because the city that I lived in, I had to take two buses to and from this place just to get to and from school. So I am parked right in front of the apartment where my husband and I stayed in for almost two years. And um, the reason that we left this apartment, it was getting way too expensive for us to stay in the city. And then my husband and I made the difficult decision to leave the city to move to where we are currently living right now. And we are living with my mother-in-law, so that's my husband's mom. And reason for us leaving the city where I was born and raised, it's for survival. Basically, that's all that it is. It was for survival. I had to move to a different parking spot because there were too many people parked behind me, but the apartment back there, that's where my husband and I lived. So the reason that we moved was financial. It was survival. We couldn't afford living here anymore and it broke my mom and my sister's heart for us to move, but it was the best decision for us just to start new somewhere else. We are currently saving to afford our first house, so hopefully we'll be able to do that soon, but going on this tour of the city that you were born and raised in brought back a lot of memories, some good, some bad, some in between. Basically, what common theme for the constant moving, it was survival. It was for happiness. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like it and please subscribe. And I hope you have a zippity doo dad day. Goodbye.